greetings. We, are the Guardian. Welcome to Night Vision. I was talking to a relative stranger recently, and she came right out and asked, why do you believe in God? My first thought was, good for you. Because previously, whenever that topic was broached, I was greeted with evasion and obfuscation. I love the directness of the question, because I hate playing games. I hate having to walk on eggshells around some people, on certain topics. I prefer that the conversation be more direct, open, and transparent. So why do I believe in God? Where do I start? It's largely based on evidence, but certainly not solely just physical evidence. As a physicist, I am wired to look for, and embrace evidence. But as a physicist, I was constantly pressured to embrace the atheistic worldview of naturalism. Naturalism is the atheistic worldview that all things are natural. In other words, God is not allowed. So according to my atheistic cohorts, everything has to have a natural explanation, even when that explanation, defies all known laws of science. So after a few years of floating downstream with all the other dead fish, I began to ask questions, but that did not end well. I found out the hard way, that as a scientist, I am evidently required to walk lockstep with my colleagues. Embrace the accepted narrative, and shut up. I'm sorry, that's not science, that's just manipulation and propaganda. So I did the unthinkable, I rebelled against the narrative, and opened my mind to all possibilities. That's true science, that's true learning. Without an opened mind, we would never have Newton, Galileo, Copernicus, or Einstein. They refused to stay in their assigned cubicles. They wandered outside the box, and found the wonder of creation. So I began to take a closer look at the accepted narrative, because I wanted to verify my own foundations. If I was going to believe and teach something, I wanted my beliefs to be based on my own research and conclusions, rather than the force-fed conclusions of others. What I found was rather astonishing. It turned out that my original foundation of naturalism, was a house of cards, bolstered by nothing more than atheistic smoke and mirrors. Especially the study of origins. Origins is simply the study of beginnings, specifically the origin of the universe, the origin of life on earth, and the origin of humanity, homo sapiens sapiens. This was quite a shock to my system, because I assumed that all my beliefs were evidence-based. I assumed that the foundation of my education, all the years of study and training were based on verified factual data. Certainly everything my professors taught me, was documented and undeniable, right? As it turned out, none, literally none of their origin theories had any verified factual data to back it up. I'm sorry but that is literally the definition of propaganda. So like you, I was taught the naturalistic worldview about the origin of the universe. It created itself, from a singularity, generated by the multiverse. They called it the Big Bang. When I went looking for verified factual data to back up that hypothesis, I found nothing but atheistic propaganda, and outright deception. So like you, I was taught the naturalistic worldview about the origin of life on Earth. It created itself, from non-living chemicals. They called it abiogenesis. When I went looking for verified factual data to back up that hypothesis, I found nothing but atheistic propaganda, and outright deception. As it turns out, abiogenesis is nothing more than an atheistic fairy tale, with literally not a shred of evidence. So like you, I was taught the naturalistic worldview about the origin of humanity. We all somehow magically evolved, from bacteria. They called it Darwinian evolution. When I went looking for verified factual data to back up that hypothesis, I found nothing but atheistic propaganda, and outright deception. But what about the fossil record? Surely the fossil record would back up Darwin's theory, right? Unfortunately for the atheists, the fossil record not only defies evolution, it corroborates creationism. The fossil record shows explosions of life, such as the Cambrian explosion, 
where thousands of species burst onto the scene, with absolutely no evolutionary ancestors of any kind. Then the species adapt, and then disappear. So the fossil record shows these three events, over and over and over. Explosions, Adaptation, Extinction. There is no fossil record of gradual evolution. Crustaceans explode onto the scene, then adapt or disappear. Vertebrates, same thing. Reptiles, same thing. Birds, same thing. Mammals, same thing. Explosions, adaptation, extinction, not a slow gradual evolution. The fossil record does not support the theory of evolution, it actually turns out to be Darwin's worst nightmare. So when it came to finding evidence to support the atheistic worldview of naturalism, it's just not there. As it turns out, naturalism is not evidence-based science, it is a faith-based religion. Sure it's atheistic to the core, but at the end of the day, atheism is just a religion also. It may be a God-hating and truth-denying religion, but it's still a system of belief. You don't have to believe in God to be a quote-unquote religion. Buddhism is a religion, and they don't believe in God either. The atheists abhor the label of religion, but once again, disliking something, doesn't make it go away. Just because I don't like gravity, doesn't allow me to defy it. But ultimately, God is a spirit, and those who worship him, must worship him in spirit, and in truth. The truth part is the physical evidence that we have been discussing. The spirit part, gets a bit more complicated. The ancient writings teach that human beings, are created in the image of God. God is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. That's the mind, the body, and the spirit of God. And since we were created in his image, then we too are an eternal spirit, that possesses a mind, and dwells in a body. The spirit is the real you, your innermost being. It is not only your source of consciousness, it is also your direct connection to your creator. And his spirit, bears witness with our spirit, that we are literally the children of God. Peace be unto you and your house. Embrace your own heart my friend. Stop running from reality, running from God. If in your heart of hearts, you can still hear that still small voice, listen, as he beckons you, to come back home.